In today's vlog, I want to discuss the use of getting the most out of an inexpensive table saw. Saws that usually run in the $100 range. And yes, there are saws that you can buy, table saws, that uh, run less than $100. Uh, and these are usually purchased by those who uh, have occasional use or need an extra saw somewhere for short-term use. You really don't want to spend three, four, five, six hundred dollars for a, a professional quality table saw. You can get uh, reasonably good use out of these. They take a little bit extra time to set up. And I'm going to discuss some of the things that you would... Uh, want to do to uh, use these to make the most out of them in this video. Now let's suppose for instance that you'd want to set up the saw to rip a board three inches wide. Notice the fence is kind of wobbly on an inexpensive saw like this. But if you take and measure three inches at the front of the blade and the back of the blade and then lock it in place and then double check your measurements to make sure you're going to get an accurate rip. It will give you that ability. It's not as quick and easy as one that has a very accurate fence system on it. But it does work. You can make this work for ripping. So if you wanted to rip a board now that was that wide, you would simply, of course, run the board through there and get the three inch width that you were looking for. And it would do that without binding up as it left the, uh, the back end of the saw. Also, like to add that whenever you're using a table saw, you should always use a pusher stick to get the wood all the way through without getting your hands near the blade. It's okay to hold the wood up up at the uh, end here, but once you get to the end of the wood as it's going through the blade you want to use a pusher stick to get it through this particular saw came with with one for less than a hundred dollars I got a plastic pusher stick which works just fine it has a little ridge in here so that it holds the edge of the wood and pushes it through <clears throat> so if I could demonstrate if I was pushing a piece of wood through here it's just a, I'm not going to set this up very well but you were pushing a piece of wood through here and you got close to the end you'd want to push it through the rest of the way with the pusher stick always a good idea also wear safety goggles particles flying off can hit you in the eye and another handy thing that you can add to the saw for not not very much money less than forty dollars you can uh, use one of these uh, take up stands they're adjustable they go directly at the back end of the saw and take up the wood so that you don't lose your uh, grip on it as it passes out of the saw. So if you were pushing it through, it would hit the take up. You could get all the way past, right there and past the saw without having loss of, of control of the wood, having it, you know, worrying about it falling down or binding up in the saw or whatever. Now using the miter guide to uh, push wood through the, the saw and keep it at a particular angle uh, may be something that uh, an inexpensive saw isn't uh, very good at. Basically because you can see the wobble in there. You're going to be off a degree or two as you're going through. You can see as you go through there, you want to kind of push the miter guide all the way to one side and keep it there as you're going through to, to pass through the blade. And in order to set up the miter guide you'd want to take and put the a square of some sort on there, measure the distance. If you're set at 90 degrees on the miter gauge you'd want to use a square a 90 degree to make sure that you're you do it on this side you'll be able to see better, but if you had a piece of wood going through there, you'd want to make sure you were cutting on the angle you had set. 
I don't know if you can see there or not, but the, the 90 degrees is met. It's actually the same distance here and here from the edge of the, of the square. So this is a 90 degree square. You know that, that you're set at 90 degrees and that you are actually at 90 degrees as you would to go through. Provided you keep the, the, the miter guide pushed to one side in the track because of that slop that I mentioned. You do get a little slop. You can use it for occasional use. It's not professional quality. But again, for the occasional user, a $100 table saw can suffice. It can actually do all the work that you need it to do. And this particular saw, most table saws, all that I know of, actually, do allow your, your uh, does allow for your blade to, to turn on an angle here. You can actually angle it over. They only angle one direction on the less expensive saws, even the more expensive ones. I rarely see one that will angle both ways, if ever. But you can uh, get a, a mitered cut going through on a rip, say a 45 or a 30, whatever you need. There is a gauge on here, but again, you'd need to use uh, an angle uh, um, device to, to double check your blade angle to make sure it is actually uh, in that um, angle as you pass your your lumber through. And this particular saw came through with its own metal stand. It has a safety switch which you can see there with a removable key in case you had children. I don't know why you'd have children playing in your shop, but if you did uh, you'd want to unplug the saw number one. And the other thing you might want to do, you might want to consider, is lowering the blade when you're not using it so that there's no chance of anyone being uh, injured by the blade if it does happen to come on for some strange reason or other <clears throat> the uh, the key can be removed although I doubt if there are too many people who actually do that because loss of the key and misplacing it or whatever would, would cause you to lose use of your saw <clears throat> therefore I doubt like I say that's the, the best method lowering the blade generally suffices Unplugging the saw, that works as well. And those are two things I highly recommend. Uh, these little saws, and this is a 10 inch, it's you know fairly uh, standard size in table saws, can um, accomplish a good portion of uh, for occasional use of the work that you uh, have in store for it. Uh, if you do a lot of work with the table saw, you need maybe a professional quality, one with a cast iron, table, maybe a larger table, maybe even have it built in so that you can slide larger stock like plywood across it and uh, make it useful that way. Although I have to tell you, I found a much better way to rip and to cross cut plywood more accurately than a t any table saw. And I will discuss that in another vlog here on YouTube. So for around $100 you're really going to get yourself something that uh, will handle most homeowners needs for occasional use. Uh, I've used this particular saw uh, to rip stock for uh, cabinets, uh, tabletops, that sort of thing. And it does a reasonably good job uh, as long as you're careful with how you set it up and uh, are careful using it. Uh, you should always uh, keep your fingers clear of the blade. Uh, generally keep the uh, blade down when you're not using it and keep the, the saw unplugged like it is right now. And also take and put the uh, uh, square to it and, and uh, test it periodically to make sure all of your, uh, your guides are uh, accurate. And that's about it. If you like this, subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.